Hello everyone and welcome back to Roleplay One Shots the West Marches. My name is JP McDaniel. If this is our your first time, not our first time joining us, uh, welcome. Hopefully you guys are in for a treat. Let's go ahead and run around the cast here. Some of the faces you might recognize, some of them you won't. Let's get started with the ones you will. Steven, how's it going, man? Good, dude. I'm, uh, I'm super stoked. West Marches is always a really fun game to prepare for because... One of the core things about it is that there's a, a, an open world that you guys can sort of explore and do what you want with. So I, I know a lot more things that you could do than I ever do for any other game. Uh, but at the same time, I'm also terrified that you choose to do something that I have not prepared for at all. So it'll be an exciting ride. Nice. Nice. We're excited. We're excited. Uh, Clara Clarickson, also known as Shannon. How's it going? I don't know why I just gave her character name. It's already on the overlay. <laughs> Whatever. It's already there. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. <laughs> How's it going, Shannon? Uh, it's going really good. I am very excited for today. I'm a little worried that there's going to be some riots or retos happening because I'm not bringing back Bardrick Bardison, but I'm sorry. He needed to gather his party before venturing forth, so, you know, that's why I have created a new persona. Cool, cool. And we'll get to uh, we'll get to the characters in just a sec. Now on to the newbies. Let's start with the complete noob here, Strippin. Never played D and D before. Hello, hello, hello. How's it going, sir? Good, good. I'm a bit nervous, but I'm I'm all right. Recovering from the WoW uh, grind. Yeah, yeah. I assume. Yeah. That thing. Yeah. That thing. Well, I don't think I'm going to recover just right away. I think you're the same. Yeah. But, uh, no. Yeah. I'm ready. Cool. Cool. I'm ready. And I guess I should also just ask you to introduce yourself. <clears throat> For those that uh, don't know who you and our other newcomer are, who are you, oh, Strippin? Okay. What do you do on the internet? Uh, I'm Strippin. I do uh, YouTube and Twitch, and I play games for a living. Uh, sometimes well, <laughs> sometimes very poorly. Yeah. So yeah, that's about it, really. There's not much else to tell. Great, easy, short and sweet. Last but not least, we've got Man vs. Game on the show. It's been, I think I started trying to get you on the show. Almost a year ago. <laughs> literally forever ago, I think. Yeah. And, then, and then it was literally, I was just in your chat, you're like, hey man, we should do that role play thing sometime. And I'm like, what? I know. And then, and then started you started scrambling immediately. The direct messages you'd send, you'd be like, hey, should I you know, pencil you in for uh, next Saturday? And I'd just like, never respond. And yeah, I'd just be like, oh, all right, all right. That's just, I'm just going to go back to my room now. What a dick I am. I know. <laughs> but it's great to be here. And you have my sword. Should you need it? Nice. Is that, wait, uh, I like how the sword just is. That, like, is, <laughs> that is not the that is not the effect I was going for there. That's Lousy craftsmanship. I'm I'm just gonna put yeah. that away. That, that's okay. Uh, it doesn't matter. You know why? Because uh, Sir Douglas. Well, you know what? We don't need to talk about the characters just yet. Uh, but it's great to be here. If you don't know me, I do the Twitch thing. Uh, I haven't even delved into YouTube. That's just way too complicated. So, uh, <laughs> hello, mankind. It's great to be here. I can't wait to roll some dice. I got my <laughs> metal dice over here. These are my totems. He's nice. going to help me with those rolls today. So Those are lethal, man. I could kill a man with you that. It, it, it's weighty. Like, coffee tables. Metal dice is... aren't, yeah. I'm not, I, you don't fuck with someone with metal dice, man. That's right. Yeah. So... I just, just have actually. I just have virtual dice. That's. I'm not even like a true player. I just. I need. Okay, dice. this is. All, I'm. I'm out. This is done. I thought this was like a legit <laughs> operation here. I have some dice somewhere. I don't know where they're at though. Uh, well, and then I just want to say, I have done some role playing. Uh, my friends and I, like, if you know Ezekiel the Third, he was he was on this uh, show uh, as well. Uh, was it two shows ago or last show? Last show for one. Last time. show. So they were okay. Never mind. Uh. Yeah, we have done some role playing, and we started back when there was still Thacko. Okay, I so, still play Thacko, man. It's great. So what you're saying is that you're a D and D hipster. I just, that was I was trying to do so the tired. humblest of brags. So uh, that, was, that was a humble, yeah, the humble brag. brag is is yeah no. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm ready. I'm ready to. And Steve, you don't have anything to worry about from uh, from this guy. I'm ready to just you know get get some stuff done. All right. Yeah. Well, you know, we'll we'll see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll see how that goes. Uh, you know, good luck. Cool. Yeah, the the guy who like like waited until almost the last minute to get with you to you know to get the the character <laughs> rolled up. You're like, don't have to wear anything from for me. So. Well, you know, and, we did it this morning, so we're all prepped. <laughs> that's right. We're all good. We're all. That's how we do things. Like I, people don't understand. They're like, 
Man, JP's always so prepared for his shows and like he's got everything. This show actually was finished about three minutes ago, <laughs> right before we went live. I'm like, oh, I think I got, okay, we got this. Hey, guys, can you message me real quick for your bios? Can we get some information? For that? Exactly. Yeah, she only asked me to be on the show ah. this morning. Yeah. I'm still pulling yeah. books out, so, you know. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, all right, Steve, why don't you do your intro thing in the West Marches? I'm actually going to turn on some lights, so I don't, like, you know, this is actual production. So I'll do that, and you do your thing. All right. Awesome. So, um, let's see here. You guys are all in the town of Viriscali. And Viriscali is like, um, there's probably like 2,500 people who live there. And it's out in the middle of a, a plain, like a rolling plain that's called the Central Ellen Plain. And to the north, there's a forest called the Starkwald. To the west, there, uh, there are a set of foothills that break into mountains. To the east, there's a swamp called the Rayfen. And to the south, uh, the plain sort of continues until uh, people start calling it the South Ellen Plain after about a day's worth of travel. Um, the world of the West Marches is, um, it's, it's kind of a, well, there's a dichotomy. On one hand, most people are very, very comfortable in their day-to-day -day life. Um, they are peasants who work the fields until, you know, they die and pass their farm down to their children. Um, they're nobles who, you know, mint coin and, you know, exchange deeds of land with other nobles and, you know, throw raucous parties and then they die and pass their holdings down to their children. Um, but every once in a very rare while, there are people who feel this sort of siren call of the wilderness beyond civilization. Um, and that's you. Uh, and anybody who feels that call feels kind of not at home within human society. Um, and they're driven to sort of seek out adventure. And uh, interestingly enough, adventure is one of the only ways you can actually change your status in the world. Um, because really, uh, social structures in the world of the West March Marches are very rigid. So um, people like you are not respected generally. Everybody can sort of tell that you are just a little bit, um, you know, you have the wanderlust or you ha you're interested in things that you shouldn't be interested in, right? Like, you know, you might want to go strolling across the moors and everybody will look at you and say, hey, uh, that's how the goblins will steal you away and devour you. Don't do that. Uh, and, and maybe you just don't care or you want to see what happens. Um, you've, you have absolutely heard rumors of riches and uh, magic and powerful items, like artifacts and, and ancient magical items out in the wilderness. Um, many people never go searching, of course, but, um, you know, it's piqued your interest. Most people like yourself eventually venture to the uh, westernmost town in the kingdom of Lorien, which is called Viriscali, which is where you are because it's become something of a hub for adventurers who sort of come here on their way out into the wilderness in order to, um, you know, see if they can make a name for themselves or better their situation. So um, probably up until very recently, none of you knew each other, but as a result of being in Veriscali and especially staying at a local establishment called Frelka's Tavern, it's a, a small squat tavern that's sort of half built into the earth, um, so when you go in, you're, you're heading down a, a set of stairs that delve deep into the clay, um, the clay earth in the area. So it's, it's dark, it's dim, there's a low ceiling, it's always filled with uh, the smoke from various pipes of uh, various substances. Um, Frelka, <laughs> Frelka is a, um, an engaging gentleman who uh, is always interested in what, what sort of stories the adventurers bring back to his tavern. Um, he actually says that at one point in the past, there used to be a, a regular group of people who would take one of his tables and they, they pulled it over into a corner and they started carving out uh, a map of the surrounding area, actually, onto the surface of this table. Um, but, uh, you know, that was like a decade or two ago and after a couple bar fights the table was so damaged that he just sort of, you know, tossed it or chopped it into firewood or something. It's no longer around. Um, but there is sort of a tradition here, and that's where you guys are all starting. Um, so, uh, first of all, why don't you each introduce yourselves, and we can find out who we're dealing with. Let's, uh, let's have the newbie do it first. Hi. Toss cobble. <laughs> yeah. 
Can you uh, can you introduce your character? <clears throat> yeah, I'm a uh, Gilly Toss Cobble. I'm uh, an elf bard. Um, I was found by a a nice halfling family and raised. So um, I have this notion of telling people and behaving like I'm a halfling, but I'm an elf. So um, were you just always taller than your family at all times? Yeah, like hitting my head on the ceiling okay. beams and stuff. Gotcha. Um, Gilly's a girl, by the way, female. Okay. Um, but also, I'm wearing halfling clothes, so they're like, <laughs> it looks like I'm wearing shorts, but they're halfling trousers, you know? <laughs> so it's that situation. Okay. All right. So, um, yeah. So I was causing a bit of, it was like, it's like the movie of Elf, right? I'm causing a bit of issues. So mm -hmm. um, they're like, you know, you should go out and find your calling and stop breaking everything because you're too big. Mm. So I left the little hamlet and uh, ended up here. Um, Gilly, how do your friends describe you? Um, tall would be. <laughs> it's the biggest what, thing. What, yeah, that would yeah. be the mate. Yeah, no. I know, easy going. I've got like that, that whole halfling, like hearty mm. kind of happiness going on. A um, bit clueless about the world, I'd say. Mm -hmm. Maybe naive? Yeah, I'd say naive would be a good one. Okay. How would your enemies describe you? Uh, tall would be, again, <laughs> the, uh -huh. the primary descriptor. How tall are you? How, how, what are we talking here? I'm talking like regular elf height, but you know, Is that like any enemies feet? and friends I've had have been halflings. Halflings, so, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. No. Um, that makes sense. Mm. I don't know. I'd say I've got a bit of an attitude. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Um, yeah, get a little bit cockney, uh, so a bit scrappy, <laughs> but yeah, mm -hmm. generally, generally a nice person, not really quick to anger. Yeah, but, but when you get there, you know, just for that special person. Oh, yeah. Yeah, did yeah, you yeah. say cocky or cockney? Yeah. Both. Which one? Both. <laughs> Perfect that answer. Is the same thing. They embody the same thing. Okay. Yeah, they do. <laughs> cocky, cocky and cocky. cockney. Yeah, good. Excellent. Um, are you like... Have you been playing at uh, Frelka's Tavern? Is have I been playing? Perf performing. Have you been barding? Yeah. There? Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, it's, you know, it's how, how I get free lodgings, mm -hmm. meals, mm -hmm. etc. But um, I'm actually a limerick bard, so okay. it's less, less playing music and singing and more limericks. Have which... you been, uh, like, do you have a crowd pleaser that, like, is your go-to whenever, when people are starting to get drunk and it's a little bit late at night and, you know, every, like, the party's starting to get into full swing, is there something you go to to bust out? I like to mix it up, because if you go to the same one, then mm -hmm. the crowd, you know, if it's the crowd, if it's the same crowd from yesterday, yeah. then yeah. They're, not, they're not a fan of that. So you have okay. to really just, come. so I'm always trying to come up with new limericks, you know. So. Good. That's my All right, cool. Life. Well, uh, I look forward to seeing what Gilly Toss Cobble is capable of as we uh, proceed through the game. Um, man, uh, why don't you tell us about your character? My character, <clears throat> Sir Douglas. Uh, he is, you know, uh, I, he's a human fighter. I mean, it's is he about, actually it, a knight, or is he just call himself Sir Douglas? See, this is what I was wondering is like, are we getting into like, you know, because like, this is just for the, the, the viewer's sake. So other, fresh. Char yeah. other characters won't know this. Okay. Because yeah, uh, yeah. I, it's not. Well, I don't think you would just straight up tell us like I'm a knight. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, that's kind of like his twist is that he is not actually he has not been knighted by anybody. He, he appointed himself. He is the self-appointed sir. OK. Um, he is lowborn uh he uh you know grew up on a farm with his family you know his his family they've been farmers for generations just no you know drive to be anything other than farmers uh, they live you know very simple lives but that was never enough for sir douglas uh so douglas uh over the years it just has pined to, to do anything just to get off the farm um, he saved up, uh, you know, like a stash of money, mm -hmm. um, that, that, you know, his, that, uh, he had collected, he had been kind of like, you know, skimming some off the top when they would go to, to town to sort of sell their, uh, uh, rutabagas that they farmed, they farm rutabagas. Yeah. Someone now, has to, uh, someone I actually gave you, 
I gave your character the soldier background. Is, is that something that you drive with too? Yes, absolutely. And so, okay. so he he had gone off. Uh, he had basically he saved up and um, uh, he he bought himself this war hammer. That was like the you know the thing the, the his ticket out. Um, and so he he basically just went and and joined the first kind of uh, um, you know soldiers camp. He just basically signed up for for anything he could. Um, yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. but he has ba he's he introduces himself as Sir Douglas and yeah. um, a, you know if people ask him about you know his his knighting and why he was knighted uh, you know he he maybe has he just sort of hand waves it right right or maybe like a different story like <laughs> every time he forgets the details of it so mm -hmm. um, but he is he is um, he is raring and willing to to do whatever it takes to uh, to help and uh, he is just looking for glory and and you know treasure riches that kind of thing awesome um how would your friends describe you how would your enemies describe you uh friends would describe sir douglas as um reliable um maybe not tall uh he's okay. he's about average height uh maybe not, not. He's almost as tall as as the elf. Uh, okay. But uh, <laughs> um, he's got. He's pretty haggard. Uh, he's, you know, but, but he's not, you know, off putting. Uh, he's just, you know, he grew up on a farm, so he's he's, he's kind of got like, yeah, like a five o'clock shadow going all the time, and mm -hmm. he's seen yeah. some action. Yes, he's mm -hmm. he's seen some some stuff. Uh, but uh, he's he's not like a glorious, you know, shining knight that you know draws. All the ladies in in the inn yeah. to his he's, side. He's no paladin. No, exactly, exactly. Yeah, uh, right. and your enemies? What would they say about you? Um, enemies. He can he can have you know a fairly fearsome visage you know in battle you know in the heat of battle you know that that is where I think Sir Douglas really lives you know that's that's what he mm. has lived for this this you know he's had this boring life. Um, you know, first the farm and then uh, training with soldiers and whatnot. He's just been waiting for, uh, you know, to get in, in into the uh, into the fray, so to speak. Um, yeah. So he kind of he kind of like lights up when you know when there's a battle. When he knows he gets to when he finds out that he that he gets to swing his warhammer, he kind of he's not a berserker, of course, but you know he gets. That's what that's what gets him going. Yeah, that's what he wakes up for in the morning. He will be shouting and screaming and giving the battle cries. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, great. Um, mm -hmm. Shannon, how about you? Yo. Um, Tell oh, me no, about your sorry, character. character. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> so, um, so Clara Clarkson, she's, um, for whatever reason, and she doesn't really know how this happened, uh, the god Rona, who's you know, mm -hmm. sort of this god over, she's a female god, and she's commanding or residing or however you want to say it over, uh, like, sort of hearthstone, family, life, that kind of thing. Um, so she's very, um, that's, that's sort of who her deity is, but it's a little bit more complicated than just, you know, following down the footsteps of this is my god, I praise her, I worship her. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason, Clara believes that Rona's her mom and she calls herself a half god or sometimes a full god if she wants to brag. And uh, yeah, she's got this strange birthmark right around here. So you can kind of see it, kind of not depending on where her armor is actually sitting. And it's like this little flame meant to mm -hmm. sort of, you know, be the the you know, the fire, the food fire thing that, that Rona has as her symbol. And, uh, yeah, Clara is just a, I'd like to say that she has delusions of grandeur in the nicest possible way. Um, mm. Kind of in the same way as Sir Douglas, but Sir okay. Douglas has actually been, you know, um, given a knighthood and, and that's very respectable and that's very uh, real and it's very hard to tell whether or not Clara is just crazy or whether she's genuinely the daughter of a god. Mm -hmm. And for whatever reason, you know, when she casts spells and everything, you know, she, you know, she feels this connection to Rona, it, it works out. But at the same time, you, uh, well, maybe that's just part of, maybe like that dream that she had where Rona came to her, maybe that was just crazy talk. Mm -hmm. Rona 
you know, Clara doesn't know, and therefore all of the people who Clara mm -hmm. crosses paths with also can't tell for sure. It, there's, mm -hmm. there's no way to tell one way or another. Um, so she has a little bit of an attitude about it, but in, uh, in a sort of nice way. Kind of think Thor meets Jesus. So <laughs> it's a bit okay, of that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm with it. We're, yeah. talk we're talking full on, like, this is my destiny and you're not getting in the way of that. So, okay. yeah. Shannon, I just, I just wanted to make something very clear. I, uh, you had said that I had actually been knighted. Sir Douglas actually has not been knighted. But we don't uh, know that, right? Oh. Right. Characters don't know that. Yeah. He, yeah as far okay. as you know, I have. So, oh, so okay. you're, you're, you're already getting into so character. Same but. thing. We, you and I are, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll have to remember <laughs> that we don't have. Everyone said Clara <laughs> Clarkson is Percy Jackson. <laughs> yeah. There exactly. you go. Uh, so, so Clara. How would your friends describe you? How would your enemies describe you? So my friends would describe me as always wanting to help anyone out whenever they're in trouble. That's just, you know, I'm, re I'm there, I'm ready. Doesn't matter what, I'm, I'm snapping to it. Um, I rise to the occasion. Um, and I take a lot of pride in rising to the occasion. So uh, I don't understand um, a sense of cowardice. Uh, I don't understand people who look for equitability in helping out others. Um, they would also say that I'm, I have a really strong sense of fair play in that sense. Um, you know, I'm always going to try to find um, a happy way for everyone in a scuffle to sort of resolve their situation. Um, mm, let's see. Um, I'm a bit selfless. I kind of fall on my sword. They'd probably say that. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, they'd also call me egotistical and prideful. They'd probably mm -hmm. say, uh, you know, they might say I'm a bit of a snob in that sense because I, you know, daughter of a god. So <laughs> you're not the yep. daughter of God. Yeah, I am. Absolutely. So this is, this is my destiny, you know? <laughs> so, and yeah. uh, now for our final character here, um, JP. Hi. Why don't you introduce yourself? Yeah, so Lady Charlemagne is the premier fashion uh, designer in this <laughs> world and in other worlds as well. Um, <laughs> she is a blonde bombshell with teased hair. It's very large. Mm -hmm. A southern <laughs> belle, uh, perhaps, is the, the proper term for her. Um, and we'll just say that. She, uh, she's recently come under some, uh, some bad luck, and uh, she needs a new, uh, a new model. For her new clothing line and also some some new clothing lines she kind of fell under a uh, a bad uh, a bad streak of, of uh, what am I trying to say of uh, imagination and, and is having a tough time right now okay uh, why on earth does Lady Charlemagne want to go adventuring out into the wilderness uh, you know that's where she thinks she'll find some inspiration she always has in the past with her uh, her adventuring friends who are no longer with her and uh, she has a habit of Taking, you know, other other premier fashion designers have a habit of just not living whenever she's around, and and no one really knows why or is cared to investigate. Okay, I see. Uh, maybe is it is it such that someone did investigate, and now she's trying to escape those investigations? Uh, no, Lady Charlemagne wouldn't run from anything. She would face it like right about face, um, mm -hmm. and and that maybe that's why she's here. Uh, but mostly she's been. Uh, she she heard of a a knight that had uh, been traveling and is uh, interested in perhaps uh, seeing if he could become a new model for her uh, her new clothing line. Cool. And uh, what would your friends? How would your friends describe you? How would your enemies describe you? Uh, friends <laughs> describe me as an insanely insanely nice person, always offering uh, to to pay for everything. Uh, super generous, super nice. Uh, could not have anything negative written or. Uh, spoken about her enemies mm -hmm. uh, she doesn't really have any okay no enemies yeah that people know about at least they they tend to just disappear okay Ooh. fantastic so um yeah oh, uh, oh, 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 oh. <clears throat> the biggest thing is she's known for her pastel colors she wears like Easter colors all day long Awesome. <laughs> and that's all of her clothing Jesus. line as well. And if you guys would look at your own clothes, you would probably see that it uh, has a, uh, an LC on the inseam somewhere. That's so she, she has like a production line yes. of clothing. Yes, she's known world renowned. Yeah. Would, world uh, renowned. I mean, would someone like Sir Douglas be wearing Lady Charlemagne clothes? No, uh, so, he wouldn't. So 
you know, most people would think that she's rich, but what she does with all of her extra money is make clothes for the people that can't buy it. Okay. So she's like, she's really generous. <laughs> yes. Seamstress. Yes. Okay. The Fantastic. most generous seamstress. Slash insulting. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, so oh, Douglas has some clothes. So Douglas wears earth tones. Okay. None of this is pastels. You know, you know, it could be, maybe it's like a, like a pastel earth tone. Maybe it's just That's, like a, they exist. It's not, it's not a thing. <laughs> what, like beige? <laughs> yeah, you know like beige. <laughs> I wear armor, okay? Nothing else. That's it. I'm a man. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Nothing else. Gotcha. Just armor. Right. She doesn't do armor, so yeah, she didn't She didn't make the armor. Okay. All right. Just the so, clothes under it, hopefully. So, um, like, where are you guys getting information when you're, when you're saying, okay, when you're saying to yourselves, I want to go out and, and do something. If you're wondering what kind of stuff could you do in the wilderness, how are you trying to look for that information? Uh, Lady Charlemagne or Charlemagne would eventually just or would usually just have someone go and fetch it for her, so she okay. would pay someone for the information. Um, how much are you willing to pay? Uh, let's see how much money you gave me, and <laughs> uh, you know if it's good information, she'll pay she'll pay a good price more than usual. Uh, she she doesn't have a good uh, like for her money is just a play thing. It's not something that. It's she worries about. So I would offer like two or three gold for, for info. Okay, that, that's pretty decent. So go ahead and roll uh, like a persuade check. Okay. Uh, and is that just a d20 plus my persuasion skill? Yep. Which is plus three. Twelve. Okay. Um, you know, you you're sort of wandering around through the streets of Veriscali looking for someone, and there's a young urchin boy who is very impressed with your clothes, and you notice that he's wearing like a tattered pastel shirt and mm -hmm. and nothing else. It goes down to like his knees, of course. It's it's yep. it's a man's shirt, um, and and you approach him and say, you know, young boy, I'd be willing to pay you for any information you can give me. You tell him where he can find you. Um, Anyway, he, he, he comes running up to you in Frelka's tavern. He sort of stumbles in through the door, looking around with wide eyes through the smoke-filled room, sees you over. Uh, are you sitting in, like, a corner? Are you sitting at some of the tables in the center? Are you sitting at the bar itself? Uh, is it just me, or is the party with me? You should all be there at this point, I think. I would say we have a table. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, he comes up to you, and he pulls on your sleeve, and he says, um, he says, Madame Charlemagne, Madame Charlemagne. Well, hey there, little guy. Um, <laughs> my my dad says that uh, the the folk in Castal want to go um, kill a um, a person. Well, who's this person? Um, she's a very bad woman who did a very bad thing, and they want to um, they want to hunt her down. And make sure that everybody knows that what she did was was very very bad. Well, I paid you quite a lot of gold there, and that's I need some names, little guy. <laughs> she, he he sort of scrunches up his face and he says, "Mmm, mmm." Her name is is Sina, and you can talk to um, you can talk to Arler Harley in Castile for more information. Harley, oh, we won't even in Castile. Uh, I kind of just like look at the rest of the party to see if they have any questions or. Are we with him? Yeah, yeah everyone's you're, there. All, you're all there. At oh, this point. we're already there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, everyone just kind of like keeps drinking, I guess. And, okay. Uh, uh, yeah. I'm sounds... like scrolling. I'm, I'm scrolling so... limericks on parchment. This was this was really. in the like so this little urchin boy is found inside the pub. He comes running in, yeah, because I paid him for information. Oh, okay, okay. Douglas <sighs> is a yeah. uh, little uh, excited. He uh, says, "Sounds as though somebody is in need of aid." I say we. It does, Sir Douglas. I say we go forth. Now, Sir Douglas, you probably have spent a little bit of time, at least, in the town garrison at uh, Viriscali. Yes. You've heard rumor from the guards of Veriscali 
that there are, is a group of like thugs that's going from town to town in the outlying regions of the central Ellen Plain and basically extorting um, the, the villagers of the town for supplies. Um, mm. And the reason that the guards themselves are actually not keen on investigating this, like their sergeant really wants to, but um, he's, he's basically being held back by the attitude of his men, is that uh, these guards, or these, these thugs rather, they have like signs of disease on them. They have like sores and uh, plague wounds and things like that. Um, but it's, it's starting to become quite irritating, uh, and there's starting to be something of an outcry. Well... I say oh. I, and you, I, you also know that uh, they're offering a reward for someone else to take care of the problem for them. Oh, okay. And um, that is um, there, there's a fifty gold piece bounty for their leader, who is a, a, described as a burly man who's missing his left ear, and his name is Anod. Okay. Anod. Uh, and then um, Gilly tossed cobble. Yes. Would you give me a nature roll? <laughs> that name just doesn't roll off the tongue for a bar. <laughs> Gilly Toss, Toss Cobble. cobble. Yeah. I like Toss, Toss Cobble. Toss, if you could say it. All right. What am I rolling, sorry? <laughs> so you're going to go into roll 20. You're going to type slash roll 1d20 plus, and then your nature skill, which is based on your intelligence. Which is one. So that would be three, since you're proficient in nature. Damn. 22. Awesome. Okay, Gilly. Nailed it. Um, the, like, you, you know a lot about nature. Do you ever spend any time sort of at the outskirts of Viriscali, sort of, you know, composing to yourself on, on the moors or yeah, admiring definitely. the stars? Okay. Yeah. Uh, as it's you're a, doing... It's a good, so, it's a good uh, source of inspiration. Can I just sit there and can write limericks? Yeah. Um, Look at the sky. As you're sitting there looking at the sky one afternoon... Um, three finches fly down and land on the ground in front of you. And one after another, they all open their beaks and they speak to you. Right. And they say, Oh, dear God, somebody, please. I need help. I'm trapped in this God's forsaken tower by a hideous beast. And if, if you get this message, please send word far and wide. I will pay 75 gold pieces to the man, woman, or child who can come and eliminate this beast so that I can get out of this tower. Please, I don't have much food. I can't get out. Someone help me. That's, that's what it says. Okay. I, um, so at the time, I uh, scrolled the message down on the parchment I was using. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I feel like now is a good, a good time in the tavern to bring this up. Mm-hmm. So, um, I should be like, can you, can you believe this? I found this note the other day from these birds and, uh, someone's in a tower. They need some help. What do you think of this? And I'll just pass it over to the group to have a look. I just, I kind of like look down at the note and give you like a weird look back. Just like birds talk what? to you. Yeah. That is amazing. We must help all of these people all at <laughs> once. You know, I, I think. This is in London town. They would say this is mental. What is it? What is birds talking to you? I hand it back. <laughs> I believe you, Gilly. And uh, I think right now what we need to decide on is which of these matters is most pressing and which uh, needs aid uh, most badly. Yes. So that we can. But we proceed. can help all of them. We are strong enough to help all of them. We can just do a sort of circle, as it were. Well, it'd more be like a zigzag through... Anyways, we'll, we'll get into shapes later. I know you probably don't understand them as well as I do. Uh, we need to decide... I spent three gold, so I think we should go help Sina. Or Sina. Whatever her fucking name is. <laughs> How do we even know that this lad's story has any truth to it well, whatsoever? Well, look at his attire, Sir Douglas. He's wearing... Lady Charlemagne. Uh, he he brings up his arm, which is like covered to the middle of his forearm in a sleeve, and he just wipes his snotty nose all over the sleeve. Hey, you. Well, I guess that's all you have. Keep it as you were, as you were. 
<laughs> I say, he smiles nice, nice one, kid. And I throw him some bread. Tear off a piece uh, of he, bread and I chuck it to him. Yeah, he grabs and he says, gee, thanks, mister. There we go. This is going to turn into a racist D&D, isn't it? This is yeah. Cockney. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I should have an accent as well. Uh, All right. I say we go by closest proximity. Well, this kid's right here. We are burdened by glorious <laughs> purpose, and we should help those who cannot help themselves. This Is kid this... can't even wear clothes. He's... He only has one. And... I will I win this true. argument. He is the first one we shall help. You so can I help take... me and pay for my dinner if you want. I take uh, five gold pieces out, and I hand it to the kid. Wow. Uh, he... He holds out his hands, and this is like more money than he's ever seen in one place in his life, and his eyes just go as big as saucer plates. And he says, Oh, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. And then he just like clutches it to his chest, and then he just runs Tis away. Tis only money. Tis only money. He just he turns around and just have been his feet patter up the stairs, and he just slams open the door and, and runs out. Now, that was not a smart thing to do. <laughs> and why not? Is he not a being on this land who cannot help himself? Well, he is a being on this land, but now he's got five gold and he's a being on this land. He, he's never, you he don't know what that money is. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta start small and then get big. You can't just rush straight to big. He's got eight gold now. He's got eight gold. I gave him three. <laughs> I, that kid's long gone. He's gotta go blow it on hookers and blow. <laughs> Seems as I like to see the best in people. I believe he will put that well, money to good use. He'll put it in something. Seems as though one of the matters has been taken care of rather I, quickly. It, it, I, wonderful work, Clara. Uh, I guess so. so. The remaining matter of uh, the, the, the wandering diseased thugs uh, attacking. Uh, we must go. We must help them. We must find. Uh, we need to find these thugs and take care of them. And I say now. Yeah, go on then. I'm right bored. I agree. Let us go. What, Sorry, what? Is that left board? What? What does right board mean? I'm right. I'm right board. It means. Oh. I'm bored. Well, why Looking not just say I'm bored? Oh. <coughs> so uh, the four of you discuss the etymology <laughs> yeah, of like being bored. <laughs> um, as as you stroll out of Frelka's tavern, like, what are you gonna do now? Where do you go? Uh, I'm up for whatever, sir. I, I'm just like, Sir Douglas. What time, what, of, what time of day is it? Uh, like midday. Uh, I'm just like, sir, sir Douglas, whatever you think is right, we'll go and do that. I, I trust in you, and I give you like a wink. I kind of look confused, not sure what the wink means. Uh, <laughs> Douglas is not the smartest guy uh, in the party. Uh, <laughs> But uh, I think we should go speak with some of the soldiers in the garrison, maybe see if they've seen anything uh, suspicious uh, happening uh, around in the town. Cool. Mm. Verily. Let's go. Yeah. So you, uh, uh, some soldiers. Sir Douglas, are you leading the way over towards uh, the, the center of town where the garrison is? Absolutely. I, I think I am naturally, you know, fit to, to, to lead the party, so I, I will lead the way. Come, it is, it is this way to, to, the, to the garrison. I follow promptly behind. Yeah, I'm at the back okay. stretch here and I got my hands behind my head. Just... Um, there's like a wooden palisade in the center of town where uh, the garrison is garrisoned. Um, and there's probably like 200 or 300 soldiers all told, uh, representing a force in Veriscali. Um And there are they're all equipped in sort of varying states of, uh, of technology, basically. Like, many of them are just kind of wearing leather armor, and they've got a decent longbow, but that's it. Um, but, you know, it's clear that the officers are a little better provided for wearing uh, splint mail with uh, the symbol of the Kingdom of Lorien, which looks like a, a branching tree and a moon over top of it, um, emblazoned uh, on the left-hand side of their chest. Um, and there's there's one officer out front uh, speaking with two sort of um, you know infantrymen I guess as you approach. What do you do, uh, Sir Douglas? I believe these are your people. You should probably talk. Absolutely, I uh, walk right up to the three soldiers uh, speaking. Mm -hmm. um, 
would one be a captain, maybe? Yep, yep. The guy wearing uh, the heavier armor is likely to be an officer of some kind. Some kind. Okay. Captain, Sir Douglas, uh, I uh, have found a party, uh, and I am looking. We are looking to uh, help resolve this issue uh, of the the wandering thugs. Um, has there been any uh, information at all? Uh, any any. Uh, any, anything going on around town that might uh, help lead us to their whereabouts? Uh, the captain fixes you with a, an appraising stare. He says, hmm, Sir Douglas, yes, I remember you. You were in here just a couple days ago. Uh, if I recall correctly, you were playing cards, was it, with my men? Yes, yes. Uh, idle time. Um... Not, not what I wish that we were doing. I, I would much rather be on the battlefield, uh, protecting. Uh, mm, yeah, the yeah. Well, every every soldier would rather be on the battlefield than playing cards. But <laughs> strange how often soldiers play cards, isn't it? <laughs> it is true. Uh, I kind of butt in because I just see this is going nowhere, and I'm just like, gentlemen, it's a pleasure to meet you. Uh, what's your What's your charisma? Uh, Lady Charlemagne. Uh, hold on. Uh, <laughs> Thirteen or a one? Um, okay. Uh, you know he he turns towards you and he smiles and he Plus says, three in persuasion." Ah, um, Lady, uh, are you with this uh, this card shark reprobate? Well, I do <laughs> say I am. Ah, well, keep a close eye on your wallet. My men lost a good amount of coin to him the other day. I'll be all right. Thank you for the tip. It's very kind. Well, pleased to be of service. What can I do for you, ma'am? Well, I, my friend just had some questions, and rather than talking about card games, I'd much rather you would just answer them for us. Can you give me a persuade roll? Yep. Six. Um, <laughs> you know, he sort of frowns, and he says, you know, uh, ooh, hang on, I need my, I need my tables. Come up here, tables. Mm, yeah. Oh, people want me to do a hotness roll. Is it still 3D, 41? <laughs> D1? No. Oh, what? Your, your hotness Wait, what? is already established. Okay. People, Smoldering. It's a role play thing. People are... Anyways. <laughs> oh, for hotness. I'm, I'm comfortable leaving that to Solon. Okay. okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the captain says, well, you know, now that I, now that I think of it... Uh, Seems like I heard one of my men thinking about he was uh, going to go take up that offer. That 75 gold pieces goes a long way towards a soldier's salary, don't you think? I don't know. I don't know if uh, you, 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 you folk don't really look the type. I, I, uh, I look at him uh, with like a stern look, almost as if my eyes change from like being very batty and not in the insane way, just like batting eyelashes. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> And then very, very serious and just be like, well, we can take care of ourselves, Captain. Thank you very much. We're just looking for some information. Yes. Um, Though they may not look it, uh, I do believe their heart is in the right place. And uh, they are willing to uh, help uh, with this, this issue that the, the, the town is facing. You're talking to the Captain about your, your team members? Yes, kind of trying to, you know, defend them a little bit, you know. Uh, Obviously, I've, you know, I, I, Sir Douglas has his doubts, you know, in the back of his mind. It's like he's got the seamstress and the, uh, the bard wearing uh, hobbit clothes. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's like, I think he feels like they really, they need him, you know, like this, this ragtag group. He's so like, you're sort of, you're stepping up to like, give them a, a decent face and protect them and, and try to as, put put everything right with the uh, with the guy. As he right. says that, as he says, their hearts are in the right place. I like take my my blonde hair and fluff it back behind. Sit, okay. And then uh, kind of like I'm wearing like a pretty exposing V neck, and so I'm just yeah. like, yeah, my heart is in my in the right place. And I just kind of like uh -huh. look down yeah. and make yeah. sure I look bat my eyes back again <laughs> once at the captain. Okay, um, man, uh, why don't you make a persuasion roll with advantage, which means roll uh, 1d20 twice and take the highest result. Ooh, all right, here we go. Uh, first roll, orange Jesus be with me. Okay, 
So the twenty. Do you know the sin? Okay, great. I hope so. Yeah, and then. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, highest is a fourteen. Yeah. Um, the captain sort of crosses his arms. He says, "Listen, I don't want my boys getting exposed to whatever the hell it is. So, you know." Maybe if I send you, then we'll all be, uh, you know, all of our problems will be solved anyway. So, yeah, yeah, I've heard a little bit about it. You should uh, you should make your way down south about a couple, or uh, it's about an hour's stroll down to the south to, to make your way to NOLA. Um, there's an establishment there called um, the, the Four House, F-O-R-E. And um, at this location, uh, well... It might be the sort of place you would actually enjoy. It's a gambling establishment, and uh, I've heard rumor that uh, there have been individuals coming in and going to and from this establishment who uh, perhaps are bearing signs of the plague. You might go check it out, see if you can get any more information out of the uh, proprietor or if there's anybody there. This shall Sounds. pose a challenge for me. I've never cured a plague before, but I'm up to it. Let's go. To the I'm, four I'm like on the fence. I'm like, plague? I don't want no plague. Well, we'll make sure you don't get Friend, it. Friend, you are in the presence of the daughter of Rona. You will be safe. You will be fine. Trust. Plus, and if you do get sick, we'll just kill you. And, and, and <laughs> I, I have been trained uh, a bit in uh, field uh, medicines. So uh, if the daughter of a god cannot help you, then I can... Do what I can as well. Fear not, uh, Gilly. Fair enough. Sir Douglas is a good man. Trust in us. <laughs> I knew you were going to be a pushover, Gilly. Let's go. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I, like I, I tell my head back and say, Charlemagne, honestly, I'm amazed you didn't know these guards already. These guards? And I just keep walking. <laughs> guards. What did he just say? Can someone translate? <laughs> <laughs> and we just kind of like keep walking. <laughs> right on. So you guys head out of town to the south, strolling across the open fields of the central Ellen Plain. Um, there is a, a small track that obviously leads from Viriscali down towards uh, towards Nola, which is a nearby town. As you stroll, um, like Viriscali is not a farming town. It's kind of like the market hub for a number of nearby villages. So. Uh, Castau and Nola are the two big support villages that serve Viriscali. Um, and as you stroll after about 20 minutes, everything around you is farmlands. There's just farmlands as far as the eye can see. Um, and you come up to, to eventually sort of a, a closer clustering of buildings. Um, and, you know, that's it, basically. It's, it's, it's like a one intersection town out in the hinterlands. Okay. Are we on horseback or... No. We're just walking. Yeah. I'm He's a little bit disgusted that I'm having to walk through like the You can see me like watching where I step instead of just yeah. walking forward. Um like uh what kind of shoes are you wearing? Heels of some sort if they have a... <laughs> Yeah. Well, you know, as a, as a seamstress, I assume that you have access to only the finest fashion. So yeah, I, I don't make shoes though, so I I had no. to uh But you you know merchants, you know yeah. people. I had, know to, I had to get. buy them from a famous cobbler, whoever that yeah, is. Yeah, exactly. I don't know who it was. You have to make up the name. Okay. <laughs> would... His name was... Uh, her name was... Let's see. Um, Aomed. Okay, Aomeds. I'll write that down in case it ever comes up. Lady Charlemagne, perhaps uh, this would be easier if you maybe just carried the heels. Uh, probably not the best footwear for... Traveling out into the uh, the wilderness. Well, they are getting kind of mucky, but I don't want to mess up my toes. It's right. been dry recently, uh, so you know the road isn't too bad. Though there are a number of uh, bombs you need to avoid along the way. Someone's been pulling a cart with a couple of horses, and you know every once in a while you gotta take a little detour around a pile. Uh, I, I kind of let five or six or five or ten seconds pass of just idle silence and turn back to Sir Douglas and, and I say, you know, a proper knight would have asked to carry me rather than tell me to take off my shoes. Mm. Uh, I believe she has you there, Sir Douglas. I, I pipe in with uh, a proper knight would have left you at the tavern, love. And then... <laughs> 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 I, 
I believe that I just kind of like give a snark look and then focus right Lady back. Charlemagne, on. Lady Charlemagne, it is okay. I am here for you again as your God and Savior. I am here for you. I have some common clothing on me, and in my bag there are some normal shoes. You may use those. Well, I doubt they would. Well, let's see what they look like. Okay, so I open up my backpack and I pull them out, and there's just some pair of brown, normal sort of. As you're like halfway pulling shoes. them out, I'm just like. Oh, thank you, Clara, dear. That I don't. You can put those <laughs> terrible-looking, hideous things back in. I don't, we're quite good. We're quite all right. They're probably Ma'am, like you will regret us, but at least probably feet like will. two silver pieces, like you know, decent, sturdy boots made out of like deer hide or something like that. But uh, obviously not fashionable. Stitching isn't super great, you know. Yeah, I'm not into it. I'm not into it. So this okay. Is, yeah. Um. So you you get into town. And, um, like, there's, uh, there's an old man sitting on a stoop nearby, um, and he's actually juggling. He's got uh, three pairs of, or three pairs, he's got a trio of, like, rocks that he's painted in bright colors, and he's sitting there juggling. Um, he's actually very proficient at it. Uh, Gilly, um, as, as someone who's very interested in performing, you've probably seen a couple of people perform, especially amongst the halflings, where... Um, that was it was a very sort of common thing for people to sort of just sit around and perform for each other. Mm-hmm. Um, this guy is like the upper twenty percent of uh, skill at juggling. You know, he adds a fourth one, he he drops one, and then but it was clearly intentional. Uh, and then he he catches it on like his foot, and then he kicks it up into the air and starts mm-hmm. juggling it again. Um, and there's a couple of people who are just sitting around smoking pipes and watching and admiring. Okay, I'm gonna. I, I kind of run up to him. And I'm like jumping on the spot and clapping. I'm like, oh wow, wow! <laughs> I'm taking it in. Wait until he's finished. Uh, he catches all three balls in one hand, uh, and he just ba- rests the fourth ball, balancing on his foot. Um, and he turns to you, and he just gives a little nod. Uh, he picks up a a pipe and taps out the ashes and starts packing in a little bit of pipe leaf. Uh, I'm gonna produce one gold piece uh-huh. and uh, just kind of like flick it off my thumb. Uh, towards him, I'd be like, "That was great." Um, you know, he's he's packing his pipe, and he just sort of like leans backwards and like balances on his bum with his legs stuck out in one direction, and you know, the back of him sort of reaching out behind him, and he catches the gold piece in his teeth, and he flashes you a smile. <laughs> Nailed it. Yeah, mm. awesome. Uh, he finishes packing his pipe. He strikes a spark into it and nurses it into a flame draws on it deeply, exhales satisfyingly, and uh, he, he turns to you and says, Ah, ah, fair elven maiden, tell me your name. I say, uh, I'm Gilly, who are you? Uh, he, he, he skirts a small bow from his seating position. He says, My name is Anulf. I'm a farmer in these parts, though. I've been practicing my routine for many, many years. It's a fine way to pass the time. I find uh, find it valuable in entertaining my companions here. I kind of I sidestep and kind of swing my hand back, and I uh, I kind of introduce the group. I'm like, this is my group. I say, this is Clara, Charlemagne, and Sir Douglas. I do a low bow. Pleased to meet you. Uh, he looks each of you up and down. He says, "Well, looks to me like." One of you is a soldier, and one of you is some frilly woman. What? Well, what I is was... your group? <laughs> I kind of just like... St- I, I'm, I was going to talk about how good your ball handling skills <laughs> was, but not anymore, sir. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. I just keep uh, shaking my head. He just tips his head a little bit. He says, well, I hear the compliment in your words nonetheless. Thank you very much. So, Gilly, Gilly why are we talking to this miscreant? I look him up and down as I say it. He smiles. He's missing like a couple of his lower teeth. His his pipe is actually stuck in the gap between like a couple of molars. <laughs> where there's nothing there. I say, I look uh, towards Charlemagne. I say, why? Because entertainers have information, Charlemagne. Information? Yeah, I look back uh, at him what, wanting. What kind of information are you looking for? I don't know that there's too much information to be had around NOLA. It's a small town, small town folk. We don't get many visitors. It's strange to see your type around here. I kind of like nod towards Sir Douglas to kind of take the reins. You're muted. 
Man, you're muted. Oh, I'm muted. Sorry. There you go. <laughs> That's why nobody was paying attention to me. Yes. Uh, I was. I was like, Sir Douglas uh, speaks up. Um, nice. Uh, <laughs> kind of a. We don't have time for uh, pleasantries. Uh, have you heard or seen anything about a uh, a roaming group of of thugs uh, with some kind of disease on them? Uh, have there been any attacks uh, in the area as of late? Uh, one of the one of the men around. You know, sort of this. There's like a a, a half circle of um, like stumps that have cut, been cut down and placed out in front of this house. And uh, Anulf is sitting on the step, and there's like three men who are sitting with him. <laughs> One of them stands up and nods to Anulf and says, "Anulf, I'll be on my way." And he just sort of starts walking away. Um, Anulf, uh, he quickly sort of, his face just sort of falls a little bit, and he says, "Ah, you're." Uh, you're asking about them folk. Yeah, well, they, they do swing around here from time to time. What are you asking about them specifically? What do you need to know? And you can tell that, uh, like, this is a very uncomfortable topic. Like, uh, the other guys just kind of cross their arms. Um, one of them takes a deep pull from a flask that he pulls out of his, uh, out of his belt pouch. We are looking for their whereabouts so that we might uh, bring them to justice. Um, give me a persuasion roll. Persuasion. Let me get there. Ooh. That's just a d20? Mm-hmm. Okay. A big old eight! Okay, um, you know, Anolf says, well, don't know too much about them. Don't like them too much. Certainly don't know where they come from, but you can find out more off at, uh, off at the four house. It's, uh, it's a ways off to the south um, through the fields. You'll head off that way and you'll find an, an, an abandoned smokehouse. If you turn left at the abandoned smokehouse, walk another five or ten minutes uh, through a copse of trees. You'll find a house out there. It's, uh, nobody actually lives there, but um, you know, a couple of the men around town use it as an establishment of drink and gaming. You can head out there and ask around. Might be they know a little more than any of us do. Understood. The men, the men at his side each just kind of like lean to the side and spit into the ground. <laughs> Understood. Uh, I turn to our party. Uh, I believe that is where we must make haste immediately. We've already wasted too much time here. Agreed. Let us go forth. There is beer to be had. <laughs> and gambling. Mm. Uh, why don't we take our break there? <laughs> it's about time. Cool. And when we come back, we'll find out what happens at the four house. Awesome. Yeah, we'll take a quick three, five minute break. We'll come back and we'll go in hour two right after this of roleplay one shots. The West Marches group number two. I got to figure out a better name for this. We'll be right back, guys. <laughs> See you in just a bit. <laughs> <laughs> 